This is AndyTube. You know, since the beginning of this year, uh, 2021, I've suddenly got a couple dozen inquiries about putting uh, a Singer vintage machine into a cabinet. Um, can it be done? Uh, what kind of cabinet? How do you go about it? Um, I think so many people are newly attracted to these machines during the pandemic and uh, now they're sewing and they're thinking about the advantages of a cabinet. And I had a couple about uh, folks who bought a machine in a cabinet and want to take it out and they can't figure out how to, how to get it out. So that's what this video is going to cover. I'm going to talk about putting a vintage machine uh, like this model 404 into a cabinet what to look for how to select a cabinet and how to go about putting it in and then I'll quickly show you uh, how to take it out it'll be pretty obvious at that point okay so to start with this the first thing that you want to do to see if your machine can even go into a cabinet is to look at the back side of the machine right below the sewing bed so this this whole part up here is called the bed of the machine and if we look down uh, let, me, let me prop this up a little bit here if we look down just below the edge of the bed in the back you'll see these two holes right here and if you're looking to put your machine into a cabinet, that's exactly what you want to see. Now, I call these hinge pin holes. I'm not sure if that's what Singer called them, but I call them that because when you, when you mount a machine into a, like a Singer cabinet, there's some hinges that you, you mount the machine to so that the machine can drop down into the cabinet and the cabinet can be closed up. Then when you want to sew, you open the cabinet and you pull the machine up. And this is just one type of a hinge that you'll see screwed into the wood cabinet and it's got what I call this hinge pin that uh, the machine hangs on. And uh, these pins have a little uh, flat, let's see if I can get, they have a flat spot here that you screw a hinge pin set screw into. And that's what holds the machine onto the hinge pin. So if we take an even closer look at these uh, holes here. So, so there is this hinge pin hole up here, and in the hinge pin hole from the factory are installed set screws. And so I, I just call them hinge pin set screws. I don't, I don't know if that's the proper name again, but they are part of the machine, and uh, they should be in there unless somebody removed them along the way. And they're about uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch long. And there, there's one in both of the uh, hinge pin holes. And uh, as part of mounting it in the, this machine in the cabinet, you back those out far enough so they're not blocking the hole and then you set the machine onto the hinge pin and then kind of reach under the top of the cabinet there and you tighten these up okay and then you've got it mounted and that flat spot is a wider space than the set screw so there, it, there can be some minor adjusting, uh, depending on the cabinet and where they put the hinge pin in and what type. You can usually adjust them a little bit so that the machine will hang properly. 
Okay, usually you just set the machine onto the hinge pin completely like this, and then you're going to tighten it up. Okay. So that's the first thing you want to see because if you don't have these hinge pin holes, <laughs> um, you're not going to be able to mount them in what we call a drop down cabinet, meaning where the machine drops or hangs down inside the cabinet. Uh, people still will make customized tables uh, with a cutout in it and a base underneath so the machine can set inside. And uh, people still will buy a cabinet and just set the machine in uh, and just leave the cabinet open. They just want a larger bed space area for their uh, fabric uh, when they're sewing, which is, which is one of the big advantages of putting a machine into a cabinet is that you don't, you don't have uh, this this kind of uh, edge to sew up and over when you're sewing because the bed will now be pretty much flush with the top of the cabinet so it just really gives you a much bigger space to maneuver and especially if you're doing stuff like quilting and so forth you're going to appreciate that space now the next thing that you want to do if you've determined that you have these uh, um, uh, hinge pin holes is you want to measure the spacing. Now you want to know the spacing of the hinge pin holes to make sure when you look at a cabinet that the hinge pins are set that far apart. Okay. Uh, especially if it's a non-singer cabinet. I've, I've seen some very nice cabinets uh, from other sewing machine companies. But most of the other ones don't have the spacing that Singer did. But if we look at this one, we'll just measure from the center of that hinge pin hole to the center of the other one. And we come up with about nine and five eighths around there nine and a half to nine and five eighths okay and you'll find most of the singer cabinets can take that and most of the machines will have that space spacing some of the very early early machines may not the other thing that you need to measure is the dimension of the machine and especially the spacing uh, in front of the bed and at the back of the bed in the cutout of the machine. You might have the, the 9 and 5 eighths or 9 and a half opening for the hinge pins, but the cutout in the wood may be too small. So you want to know that measurement too. So we'd go from the center of the hinge pin hole uh, on the nose end of the machine to the end of the sewing bed and we get like two and a half. And then the same thing on the back end, the hand wheel end of the machine from the center of the, from, or from the end of the bed, say, to the center of the hinge pin hole or vice versa. And in this case we got four and a half. So that is about your measurements there. Now these ends in many cabinets, if your cutout is a little bit smaller, it, you can modify the cabinet. You can take a little jigsaw or a coping saw and you can enlarge the space a little bit. A lot of... Um, mm, Sears, uh, Kenmore cabinets that I've seen have square corners and uh, they're just a little bit small maybe and you can round off those corners and cut out you know an eighth or a quarter inch of the wood and then your Singer machine can fit. If 
the cabinet you want if the spacing is not matching your hinges. You're not going to be able to change these hinge pin holes. Now, if you were some kind of a fabulous machinist, you might be able to make a hinge with an offset pin, you know, to, to uh, use. But I have seen cabinets where um, the hinges, say, are wider than this. And they've taken the, one of the hinges out filled in the hole with wood putty, moved the hinge so it matches their Singer machine, uh, made a hole and remounted the hinge into the top of that table to, to match the Singer machine, just because they like the cabinet so much. So, that gets you off to a great start so far. The other thing you want to do is the, is the uh, <clears throat> overall dimensions of the bed because you want to make sure that your cutout is that big if you've got the spacing at the front and back or enlarge it one of the other things you need to see is how deep does the machine bed go and you just measure that and make a note of it in this case it looks like seven inches And that's, that's uh, pretty common that I've seen on machines. And then you want to measure the overall, you know, length of the bed from the nose to the hand wheel end. And in this case, it's looking like six, about 16 and a half. which would match the three measurements from the hinge pin spacing. Okay, and now the last thing is you, your machine may be deeper and the last thing that you want to measure is the um, height of the machine. Like it's going to be the tallest point is the top of this spool pin on this 404. I have uh, had cases early on where I was so careful, oh, my, my machine will fit in this cabinet, the hinge spacing, oh, it's great, I'll mount it in there. And then the first time I go to, to fold it down into the cabinet, I realize it won't fit, it's too tall, especially if you're looking at a touch and sew model where, where it has a Mm, kind of a bigger bracket up here and it uses a horizontal spool pin. So you want to know the height too. Okay. So that is going to be your measurements for you to go look at um, cabinets. And, and see what the opening is and the hinge spacing and so forth. Okay. Now, of course, there are a few machines that were not made to hang in a cabinet, and they're pretty. Oops, excuse me. Pretty easy to find when when you look at the back of your machine and you don't have hinge pin holes. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not going to be hanging this in a cabinet. Now there is one very popular model that doesn't have a hinge pin holes, but it was actually made to be mounted in a cabinet. Now some of you may know what that is. I'm going to set it up here and show it to you and explain why. Okay, now many of you may have known that I was talking about the hugely popular Model 301, 301A. And this uh, machine is very unique. And I believe it was the only machine made this way by Singer. But if you come around on the back side and you look for your hinge pin holes you're not going to find any. There is no hinge pin holes here. 
under the edge of the bed. And on top of that, it's uh, one of the first machines that Singer made with a flip up handle so it could be carried easily. How nice. And it has a low profile for a cabinet because the spool pin sits in the back here. It doesn't sit up on the top like most of their earlier models. It sits on a little shelf down lower. How nice. But this machine was made to go into a cabinet. And the way that the singer made it was they made a special cradle for it. It's called a cradle. And I've got a cradle here. And I'm going to show it to you right here. So this machine was made to, to sit in this cradle. And there's some pins back here. And there's a locking latch here so the machine could be set and kind of clipped into this cradle and on the back of the machine you'll see these holes for those two pins to line up and penetrate the bottom of the of the base of the machine so the back end won't slip in the cabinet cradle cabinet cradle and then in the front end this uh, locking latch is made to clip on uh, to the base down here so when the when the machine is installed properly in the cradle it's very secure okay and then if you see these arms back here those are your hinge pin holes with hinge pins set screws. So this was an option when you got your machine from Singer. If you wanted it to go into a cabinet, you purchased this cradle that, that, that came with this whole setup including the set screws. And they, you picked your cabinet, and the cradle mounts into the cabinet, and it stays in the cabinet. Then let's see if I can show you how to set this machine in here. And you kind of stick that back end in first, so that the back pins go, go into the holes back here. And then you set it down in the front, and you just heard that, that locking lever. It's on a spring, and it just clicks on over the machine. So now, and you, you fold down your handle, and you use your machine in the cabinet. And when you want to store it, you fold up the bed extension, and you put the machine down in the cabinet and it hangs from the hinges connected to the cradle. But this was the only machine they made that if you wanted to go portable with it, you brought it up uh, flat in the cabinet and you reached down here in the front and you braced your fingers on this lever and you pushed down with your thumb on the locking lever to get it off that edge flipped up the handle lifted the front end out of the cradle and then the back end would come out and you had your portable machine and if you wanted to travel with your portable machine they did have that uh, rather famous now trapezoid case that had Kind of a grass looking wallpaper finish on it with leather trim. So you could put this and stow it right in there with the foot pedal and the cords and a few notions and the scissor and so forth. 
and away you would go. Then when you got home and if you wanted to work on your quilt or whatever, you could put this back in the cradle and install it back into the cabinet. So, if you had heard about the hinges and saw hinges in a cabinet and looked at your 301 and didn't see the hinge hole and said, oh, I can't put it in a cabinet. That's not true. If you can find these cradles, they're for sale uh, off and on on eBay. And uh, they used to be about 25 bucks, but I, I think the last one I saw was more like 45 or 50. <laughs> but um, you can put a 301 in a cabinet. And they made a very special uh, um, trapezoid table that was a cabinet. Uh, I'll call it cabinet instead of table. It was a very unique style, and it was made specifically for the 301 when it came out. And the cradle fit it, and uh, the cabinet was real unique. I want to talk about machines that are in cases and you can't see looking at the back of the machine it's down uh, in a case bottom especially the plastic ones and you can't see if there's hinge pin holes so I'll show you a way like a plastic case how to take off that bottom of the case and show you that most of them have the hinge pin holes and the hinge pin holes are used sometimes to hold that case on the machine so let me do that next so many of you have seen a plastic uh, case like this and uh, I wanted to show you that if you have a machine that's in a case like this uh, chances are it has the hinge pin holes and you could mount it into a cabinet. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I put the 404 in here, even though it's uh, not made for the 404, just to give you an idea of what to do and how to look at it. So when, when it's sitting in here, the back the bed is flush with the top of the base of the case, okay? So you're not going to see the hinge pin holes. But if you take the machine out of the case, you can see if it has the hinge pin holes or not. And I'll just, whoop, I'll just give you a quick uh, lesson here how to get this out. You'll turn the machine onto usually its back. And on the bottom of it here, of the case, I'm sorry, you... you uh, turn the case over like this on the bob bottom of it. You'll see a place for a little uh, washer screw that uh, Holds this part of the case onto the machine This uh, little screw that comes out will be the same one that your drip pan or oil pan uh, screw would be but in farther down you may see these two holes and they're going to be the distance of the hinge pins on the machine with the same kind of spacing. Okay. Now I don't have the screws that would go with this, but I have a picture I clipped out of a, a video I did a long time ago that shows you the end of the two screws. So it's that kind of a small headed screw that would go through from the bottom, okay? And it would come up on the back edge of this case base. And those screws are long enough to reach in to the, the a hinge pin holes. And what you do in a case like, like that is those uh, mm, long screws, sorry for the noise, those long screws are going to go right 
in where the set screw normally is. Okay, so when you when you take the screws out from here, you can lift the machine up out of the base. And this is where those longer screws would go into. Now it was common procedure that if you bought a case at the store like this, that the, that the Singer store would take out your a hinge pin hole set screws here and they would tape them inside the case okay and um, then you would have them if you ever wanted to take the machine out of this portable case and mount them in a cabinet you you would find your hinge pins set screws someplace in here taped down Okay, so you, if not, you can find these uh, screws for sale. Uh, some of the online stores may have them, like uh, sewing parts online, and often eBay sellers will have them. This is a pretty common screw that can even fit, like to hold some uh, bushings in for the presser bar or needle bar on machines. So uh, they're not that hard to find. You can usually buy a set of them. Well, now they're probably 10 or 15 bucks for a set. But uh, you would take out the long screws and then put, put the little set screws back in to do your mounting on the machine. I'm, I'm sorry, to mount the machine on the hinges and put it in a cabinet. Okay? And then... Normally you would tape the long screws in here. So if you wanted to use the case again, you had those long mounting screws to put the machine back in. And you see uh, machine models in a case like this, like uh, uh, 327, 337, 338, 347. 413, 418, 416, 457s, 5, uh, 457s, I said that, um, 513s, a lot of those uh, models uh, people bought as a portable like this. But if you, if you want to take it out of that and put it in a cabinet, uh, you can do it. And especially if you see... Uh, holes like this on the bottom with the screw in there that's a pretty good sign you've got the hinge pin holes on the back of your machine okay so just a little clue about that and of course there's some machines you don't have hinge pin holes on like the genie series and uh, some of the more modern machines they just didn't make them to go into cabinets anymore but from uh, the early 1900s up into through the like 1960s uh, most of them you're going to see these hinge pin holes on that, that I have seen okay I want to talk to you about the website then if you're interested um, about uh, what kind of cabinets Singer made for these machines. Get an idea of some you can look for. I'll set up here in front of the computer and we'll continue. Okay, uh, this website I'm talking about, just go to your browser and search for uh, ismax.net. I-S-M-A-C-S dot N-E-T. Okay, and that... Uh, It'll come up at the top there, and we'll go there. And that uh, acronym is the International Sewing Machine Collector Society. Okay, and there's just an awful lot of information on this website if you've never uh, been here before. And it's not just singers. Um, if, you, if you start up here on this yellow uh, banner, uh, on the left side is research. If you hover there, you'll see all these manufacturer names 
of sewing machines. And whoops, over here, whoops, <laughs> over here is Singer. So if I come down here and click on Singer, it'll take you to the Singer section, the Singer sewing. Oh, I see that they have advertisements on here now. Okay. It'll take you to the Singer Sewing Machine Company and give you some menu menus here about the advertisements, articles, attachments, bobbins, cabinets, dating, household models, and so forth. For this uh, video, we're going to just click on the cabinets. Take you to the cabinet section here. And uh, here it's just showing, for an example, a Singer Open Sided Cabinet number 24. And here is a list of the sewing machine models that they say can fit in that cabinet. Model 15, 1591, model 24, 66, 99, uh, etc. up to 301. And then they just go 400 and 500. So by the 400, I don't know if they mean like 413, 418, 457 or a 401 but if you if you keep going down there's uh, more information here where they talk about um, uh, drawing room 31 and 32 cabinet Copenhagen 351 W desk I never heard of that one let me open up this page and see what that looks like Ooh, there's a little advertisement for it oh Actually, I think my wife has something real similar to this. It's a modern looking desk and, and you can use it as a desk. But in the top, you pull out a piece of wood and you can uh, store a sewing machine in there on hinges. Hmm, that's nice. I didn't know that that was the name of the cabinet she had. Hers is blonde. Uh, then, then they list by models, like a model 15. Here's cabinets, styles that that model will fit into, and some drawing room style cabinets, treadle tables that that fits into, and a couple of card tables that you can fit that model 15 into. So let's just start with that first uh, older, older cabinet, a cabinet number 40, in the Queen Anne style and if you click on there it'll bring up a little information page about it it'll have some description it'll have a drawing and either a picture or a drawing of it to show you about it okay so if you were looking for a cabinet for your model 15 or like here, 1591, that's a very popular machine. You see that number 40, Queen Anne. You see the original version of the uh, number 40, which is uh, very... V I've seen a lot of these before. Uh, it, can, it can be, you know, look like a small writing desk or end table, library table, serving table, but the machine is stored in a, on hinges inside that top. And the top part flips open and you lift up the machine and it came in walnut, mahogany, or kind of a brown mission color. So there's a table. Uh, I'll just go to the next one in line, cabinet number 42, and we'll see a different style here. This is a, a popular uh, style back then. You don't see a lot of these, but this uh, swings open and there's drawers inside. Looks like a small desk. There was a drawer here for writing um, implements and also, um, you know, some sewing storage. It had a matching bench seat that, that pushed in. Later, these became separate drawers and did not have the door that swung open, but it had the curved front doors. A, ni a nice, a uh, pretty uh, piece of furniture there. Um, uh, let's see. 
Here's a model 66 and you'll see it also the Queen Anne 40, the regular 40. Um, here's a cabinet 41. Let me show you what that looks like. So you'll see that that different machines are shown to be able to fit into uh, these cabinets. If you look at their list for that. Uh, that's the model 66 and it was 41. Um, let's see these drawing room cabinets. Let me show you what some of those look like. See a very fancy piece of furniture that folded all up. Okay, and these are more for treadles. These front doors all folded up. Here's your treadle uh, pedal. And the machine would fold down in there and the top would close. Oh, there's a nice picture. I've seen some of those in a tiger oak that were just, they were real, real pretty. So there's uh, number 22. There's a closed number 22. Uh, Model 99, uh, 101, you know, they, they made several of these here, and you can go down and find your model number, like uh, 201 is a popular machine. You see many of those same cabinets will hold a model 201. Here's a cabinet uh, 48 we haven't looked at. If, if you kind of like that style, folds up, see that fancy leg there? opens up has storage in there flip top left and right swing out storage on one of the doors uh, they're called hinge drawers this was a also a popular uh, 65 if you remember the other one that had the the matching bench and stuff this one is more plain it just has three different drawers that pull open kind of looks like uh, they call this the modern sewing cabinet and spacious writing desk <laughs> it kind of looks like a student study desk you know this little cute little oval top uh, cabinet number 68 but it was for the model 221 featherweight isn't that cute mm -hmm. and then showing the cutout in the top there's a piece of wood sits in there you have metal crossbars you rest the machine on here's your attachment storage and stuff and you take that wood cut out out and set your machine just resting on these uh, metal braces there and I'm not sure what that is unless there was two different tops maybe different I uh, see here's a card table for the model 301 can fit into this kind of a heavy-duty folding card table you can fold up and stick behind the sofa or in a closet lift out your 301 it's got the same thing a, a, a tight fitting piece of wood in there to make it a like a true card table and you pull that out and it's got uh, braces in there here's the under look at the metal braces to support the machine. I also wanted to show you, I mentioned that the 301 had a trapezoid cabinet that, and here's what it looks like. I've seen it in different um, this is a walnut finish and uh, it's got brass accents and then it uh, opens up kind of at an angle. It's hard, hard to see here in this uh, in this view but it opens up at an angle where most of these cabinets if you're sitting facing them to sew the needles a little bit to your left and the way this cabinet opens at an angle and uh, swings out to support the, the extension over here you sit directly in front of the needle and it's the only uh, it's the only cabinet I remember seeing like that. And these seem to be fairly rare. I've only seen a couple of them. I can find that combination table. Here's here's one. I'd like to have one of these too. They made two or three different ones. 
but here's a combination table number 301 and they say that the 9913 and the 12813 can fit in here and it, it's uh, like the style of a cabinet but it's um, it's uh, wider it's much wider and it has a uh, the same kind of thing a piece of wood fitting it so it just looks like a beautiful like entryway table or something but when you lift out that uh, top a uh, piece of wood you can you can set like a 9913 that came in a wood base you can set that right in the cutout that's um, oh that's a kind of a wood tray in there that's just the right height so when the, you set your machine and the base it came in in there you have a you have a a big flush uh, sewing surface there much bigger and I think some of these came where you could store the pedal up inside here and have the the knee lever come down so you could operate it. But on uh, some of these you could store the machine inside on some of the combination tables. It had uh, a more of a hinge system and you could lay the machine down in it. And then some had this kind of like a wooden tray inside that you could set the whole base like this came in a wood uh, carry case or a bent wood case you could pull the cover off and drop it right in basin all into the machine so a combination table is an interesting one too so this is the cabinet that I'm going to demonstrate the installation on. I happen to have kept two or three while well, my wife did. I sold off most of my inventory cabinets but I, I like this one and she liked it. It's kind of a compact model. I got this uh, when I bought a, a Rocketeer 503A and it was a cabinet I hadn't seen before so uh, that's why I had kept it this long. Anyway, uh, it's kind of a compact, more of a little bit compact cabinet. It has one large leaf that opens up, I'll show you. And uh, I'm just going to measure it, as we discussed, to be sure that um, my machine, that 404, is going to fit in here. Okay. So let me just open up the cabinet here. Um, I will show you back here in this corner. You see this metal bracket uh, Right here in the leaf There is a long thin screw that goes into the wood here to hold the bracket and this end is just the brackets pushed in from the bottom So you see it's got a pretty typical Singer makeup. Let me give you a little closer. It's got some some nice fine grain wood mm -hmm. and this cabinet I like because it's uh, it's solid wood it's not I mean it's not plywood there's no plastic on it it's solid wood with a hardwood veneer on it but uh, I kind of like that and it has a little bit different type of hinge than the one I showed you where the hinge is mounted from the bottom and comes up comes up here kind of like a you know horse head or a, you know instead of the lollipop hinges and it doesn't mount in a depressed area here it's uh, screwed on from the bottom both of these as a matter of fact I took some pictures from the bottom to show you the the hinge setup here. Uh, let me show you those. Okay, and you see in that close-up that each one has four screws, each bracket has four screws, which I, I kind of like because uh, it can take a heavier machine. 
and uh, before you mount a machine into a cabinet like this you want to go around and, and tighten all the any screw or or nut or bolt that you see make sure they're tightened they have a tendency to wobble a little bit <laughs> when they're this old and it's usually just the tightening up screws and and uh, leg bolts and stuff like that to be sure that it's uh, squared away for you this is the support shelf right here that the front of the machine rests on you can see that and it has a couple of hinges also, whoops, it has a couple of hinges down here. I took some pictures here of the bottom. It's probably going to give you a better view than my shaky camera. And then you can also see the edge here of those uh, supports for this shelf. So, the idea here, if you've never done this, is that you... Uh, you mount these the machine using the hinge pin holes on the back of the bed onto these hinge pins and then when you tighten it you, you can lift this up and you can drop the machine down in here and it hangs from these two hinges okay then you close this and you just you know close close up the cabinet and you have just a little kind of end table looking or I guess a very small writing desk <laughs> but then when you want to use the machine you open this uh, top leaf up and you pull the support shelf up and you grab your machine and you lift it up with the bed and you lift the front of the bed up higher than the shelf so you can fold it down and then you'll see you can just rest the machine right on the edge so the front is supported by this shelf edge and the back of course by the hinges right so uh, let's let me get my measuring tape and we'll just measure this to be sure I'm pretty sure since it took a rocketeer that it'll hold my uh, 404 that I have for it. Okay, so I'm looking for about a 7 this way and that's perfect right to the inside uh, of this little shelf ledge is uh, coming up at about 7 and an eighth which is great. And if I go this way I've got uh, about 16 and 5 eighths, which gives me about a 16th of an inch clearance on each end of the machine. And then, uh, you know, I had talked about measuring the height of the machine. And if you see here, from where the hinge is going to hold the base up to here is just a little bit over 10 inches. And if you remember, I measured my machine 12 inches. But I showed you how to measure the machine wrong because when I measured it, I had the measuring tape on my workbench and measured the height up to the top of the spool pin. But I should have started my measurement on the back edge of the bed, <laughs> you know, because the machine sits down with the bed evil it doesn't sit up here so I, I uh, that was my mistake so with this uh, let me do this again I've got about 11 inches my 10 inch tall machine from the top of the bed to the spool pin is going to fit in here just fine okay yeah, hey so I will uh, it's a good day for an install <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to get the uh, machine and I'm going to get a couple screwdrivers. Um, you'll see on your own cabinet, sometimes a shorter screwdriver can get in here underneath the machine and to the set screw better. Sometimes a longer cabinet screw and going under your arm under the front of the machine and coming up down in here 
works best. So a longer cabinet type screwdriver sometimes. So I'm going to grab one of each and I'm going to grab my hinge pin holding tool because when you're at the back of the machine trying to put your machine on this at an angle see how they flop around <laughs> so if you even if you have somebody helping you you don't really want them to hold that up with their thumbs in case you drop the machine so we use a hinge pin holding tool and then set the the machine on those and then after you tighten it you have a hinge pin holding tool removal tool so I'll grab all that and we'll get started okay uh, just as a reminder you you want to uh, back out that set screw enough so it's not blocking the hinge pin hole now don't back it out farther than you need because that's just more turns you're going to have to turn it to when you tighten the screw and it's not the best uh, working position to tighten it now for this hinge pin holding tool the idea is that it holds the pins up to prevent them from falling down while you're trying to install the machine and you should have one of these tools already that's right just a rubber band okay so we'll just slip that on and you want to put it more at the base of the hinge so that the machine won't hit it necessarily but even though there's a little bit of uh, uh, give and play in these when you put the uh, rubber band on it it holds it in the upward position just by kind of squeezing them together there. Okay, so you put them up all the way, and you got your rubber band on there, and then you've got your uh, uh, hinge pin set screws turned out, and you'll face the machine to the front of the cabinet. And now the goal is to set the hinge pin holes onto those hinge pins. Like that. Okay. Now on most of these cabinets, the cabinet is stable enough that you can let it sit like that. Uh, I, I've never worked on a iron singer, one of the iron ladies, the big black machines. And they can weigh more than double this, so I don't know if the cabinet would want to tilt back. So just be aware. But now the tricky part is getting underneath here at the base of that hinge pin and tightening the set screw. And that's why I said, uh, depending on the cabinet, you can go in from the side and get get your see if I can do this here. Get your arm up from the bottom and reach it with a longer cabinet type, or if you have a shorter type that you can reach in like this. Sometimes you just have to do it by, by feel to find that uh, set screw and tighten it up. Okay, so um, I'll give you a few tips here. Uh, when you have the machine up like this, you, you just want to keep safety in mind. So I did this by myself and it's a little precarious. Uh, you're, you're always better off to have a helper, you know, who can support the machine or, or so forth. 
but you want to put this support tray down if you can because if this falls forward and this is only a 21 pound machine but if it falls down and this isn't here to catch it it's going to go flying down on those hinges and I've seen the hinges snap from that especially with like a model 15 or a 66 or a 201 you know a heavier iron machine not a cast aluminum like this and the other thing is you can usually if you put your head to the side here you can see the edge you can see kind of a side view of the hinge pin and where to get the screw in there but I've had people lay on the floor and do it and I've had people lay this whole thing on its back on the floor and set the machine on and tighten the, the set screws and then lift the whole machine back up on its legs so whatever you do just be careful and uh, think about having uh, somebody helping you okay once the screws are tight and you want you want to be sure of this you can uh, stand behind the machine you can stand behind the machine here and hold the bed and see how this one I didn't get this one tight so I'm going to have to go back in here on this side and uh, tighten that hinge screw up a little more on um, this uh, upright side of the machine I can lift the whole table it's secure with this one it's on the flat spot you know but it's just not tight so I'm going to work on that side a little bit more I wanted to show you how to test it okay let's do our installation test again where we lift the edges of the machine and now I can lift the whole table and I'm not loose so both of my set screws now are tightened and uh, one other way for, for me I found myself tightening the screws is to get on the back side of the table here and kind of put my head down and reach around I'm right handed and I can see the edge the side there a little bit better from the back I can get a little closer and tighten that set screw up so uh, I, I, I thought I had it pretty tight before and it was firm but I think what happens is the set screws partially out sitting there for 50 years so the last few threads <laughs> in the hinge pin hole took a little bit more force but it's in there good now and you can see when the machine rests now how nice uh, it's almost perfectly flat with the top of the uh, cabinet to the top of the bed and we've added all this uh, room out here you know you, you still have a little bit of space over here for like your scissors or pin cushion and stuff but you have all this uh, extra space in the front and the back and especially on the side uh, to do your work and uh, that's what uh, many people uh, my wife really prefers uh, machines into the cabinet you know but um, that's that's it that's the installation and like I said be careful uh, let me I'm gonna drop this down onto the shelf on purpose just to show you what can happen <laughs> so if you have that thing tilted up and you got your arm under there or something and nobody's holding this or you or, or, or a friend if that thing falls on your arm you you won't be happy uh, so you know if you're doing it by yourself I, I suggest like me go around the back side so your head and arm is over on the side and then my left hand is supporting the, the machine back okay now once it is installed let me pick up my tripod here and show you 
the uh, there is your hinge pin holding tool <laughs> and if you if you just want to leave it in place go ahead but it can snag your fabric so you have your hinge pin holding tool removal tool that's it we'll just go in there and we'll uh, cut that and if it's caught up in here we can go to the front I'll put the camera back and we can pull it out the front or snip it off it may be pinched under the hinges now, usually you won't have that if you have a helper but I was manipulating this so much by myself that, that the, it may have ridden up a little bit more there we go so we've got that out of the way now and we're completely installed then as I said before I described it now I can show you when you want to put your machine away you will lift it up a little bit so that you can pull back on that uh, shelf okay <clears throat> and then lift that shelf up out of the way so now you have clearance and your machine can go hang down in there okay and there it is hanging down inside by by the two hinges so that's why you want the the brackets for the hinges to be sure they're tight you know screwed in properly you don't have some stripped threads or looseness and you want your set screws to be real tight because you don't want that falling off then once it's in there you can uh, fold, fold down your support shelf and then close up the table by folding over the extension leaf okay. now you just have a little writing table or you know an accent table I guess you could call it you can put a lamp on it, you can put some flowers or other decorations. By the way, that style of leg is called a pencil leg, <laughs> in case you're interested. Pretty good clue, it's from the 60s. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to grab one more thing here and talk about it before I finish up this uh, filming location here. Okay, depending on the uh, cabinet that you have, it may or may not have a, 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 a foot pedal bracket. This is one of two or three styles. Uh, the idea is this is mounted in the cabinet and the pedal, your foot pedal slides into it. Then it has a, a fold down knee lever so that when you push on it with the side of your knee this pushes on the button of a button style singer foot pedal or it just pushes on the top of the clamshell style foot pedal this particular one is made to go mount inside the front of the table and you can see me wiggling the the knee lever down there okay and it can be adjusted you know a little bit uh, many of them were made to mount on the side on the uh, right side and and the same way where the pedal was down here in the corner the lever and you could uh, push the lever to operate and this kind of uh, see how this goes in here Mm, yeah, if you'll notice, there's a little spring bracket here, and there's these two uh, stop brackets that come out on the bottom, and you'll see this indentation here on the back of the pedal. So this was made to go inside the, the bracket like so, and slide in and kind of lock in place okay in, in the front inside and then when you pushed on that lever 
you can see your knee lever then operates the speed control button. Okay. If you wanted to take this out, like for a 301 portable machine, or for servicing or whatever, you would just push it up from the bottom to release that little spring catch. And then it would come right out. Okay, and then when you weren't sewing, the, the little knee lever just folds up got like a nut and a bolt here or a tension screw and it just folds up out of sight so you don't see it sticking out below the cabinet okay so I wanted you to make aware of that some of the older tables had a kind of bolt-in bracket that had the inside they took the inside uh, carbon stack and plunger and everything and, and put it in this bracket permanently with a knee lever. Okay, but then later they went to this type of a bracket so you could slide the, the, the foot controller in and out. And again, it'll, ta it'll, it'll work on the clamshell style. And you can find these for sale on uh, eBay. I had a customer who did have uh, one of these mounted in the front and she didn't she didn't she couldn't move the uh, knee bracket far enough to the right so I found one on eBay that mounts on the right side and that puts the bracket on the other side of the upright the knee bracket way over here about four or five inches farther and she she liked she liked that she was a tall, long-legged woman, and she felt she was too cramped. So that allowed us to move her uh, pedal knee lever over to the side. So if you have a table without one of these and you think it's a good idea, you can look for them on eBay and find them. Okay, and then the idea is the pedal just stays uh, connected into the machine and the cords are inside all the time and you only have the cord from the wall to the machine for power to take care of. And the way that they stored the cord on most of these was just with a couple of uh, coat hooks mounted a few inches apart on the side that you'd, you'd wrap the cord like a figure eight around, you know, and then plug it in the machine and then the the one for the power you'd wrap up or hang there so you could unwrap it and take it to the wall outlet. Okay, so that is the installation. Now, the removal, as I said, is going to be pretty self-evident. The same, the same kind of a thing, right? And uh, again, you can get some help if you want, but you're going to uh, open the cabinet and pull up the support shelf and lift up the machine tilt it back put the shelf down for safety and then with the machine tilted back go in from the two sides and loosen those set screws probably I don't know four or five turns maybe and then go to the back of the machine and lift it off lift it straight up and off of those hinges. You don't need the rubber band or anything. You're just going to lift it straight up and off. Okay? And then if you do that, I would uh, turn the set screws back in to the holes on the back of the machine just so they don't end up falling out or something like that someday. So it's easy to remove and for servicing or cleaning or Maybe you got a different cabinet. You saw some of those styles on the Is Max website I took you to, and that is by no means all of them. Okay, and uh, you know they make ones that look like the student desk. They make combination tables. They make cabinets that were like 22 inch, 42 inch, and there's one about uh, 28, I think. 
that my wife has her 403 in, a maple style cabinet. That, I think, is it, my friends. Installing a vintage singer into a cabinet for convenience and more sewing area. Okay, if I missed something, please uh, leave me a comment and ask me about it below the video. And as always, I, I appreciate you tuning in to my channel and uh, all the support you've given me over the, the years. And I hope you'll come back and see me again. Take care now.